After you have created a rough cut in Media Composer 6, you may want to add more elements to your video or project. In our case, we're bringing in a audio file and we're going to add music to this. If I were to look at my timeline and look at what I have so far, I have a rough cut of three cut of three straight cut clips. And you can see it's just a straight cut, followed by another straight cut. And again, video only, no audio. So we may want to add some transitions here and perhaps some audio as well. I'll start with the audio. You will see here in my bin that I have an audio file. And I'll go ahead and double click on that and it becomes active in our source monitor. In the very top you'll see the icon that it's an audio file and it says heart after heart mp3. If I were to press the play button or the space bar or the letter L it should play. Now if you look at our audio meter here above the timeline these red buttons did light up to very loud audio. Typically, audio will always be very loud where it peaks and it may cause some distortion. Audio files by default are created very loud because after all they're for music and not intended for video files per se. So it's up to you to adjust this accordingly and we will do so later on. Now another thing about Media Composer is as you scrub this audio file, you do not hear any audio. There's no audio scrubbing. To turn on audio scrubbing in Media Composer 6, press on the caps lock key and have it leave it on. And that will go ahead and turn on your scrubbing. I will turn it off for now. You may notice that there is a gap of silence between the very beginning of the file and the time that the music actually starts. So I need to see where this, literally need to see where this begins. In order for me to do that, I need to see some audio waveforms. In Media Composer 6, you have to toggle a button in order to see audio waveforms from an audio um, a clip in the source mod. On the very bottom left hand side of my timeline you will see a button named toggle source record and timeline. I will select on that button. When it becomes highlighted I will see the name of my audio file which is also here and that belongs to whatever is in the source monitor. Now there are no waveforms yet, I have to toggle that on as well. So on the very bottom left hand side, on the far left hand side, the furthest you can go in the timeline window is a fast menu button. You will select on there and then you'll go towards the center of the drop down menu and you'll see where it says audio data and select on waveform when you do that you will see your audio waveform. Now remember that this playhead pertains to this playhead. What you're seeing here is what's in here in the source monitor. So if I were to scrub this playhead you'll see that the playhead in the source monitor also moves as well. So they are both connected. The reason I'm mentioning that is because I'm going to move this to this point where the music should start and put an end point and you will not see an endpoint here, you will see it down here, but you'll see an endpoint being made here because again they are connected. I'll go ahead and press play and the music should start right on point. And it does. Another thing I will do is I will adjust this. So I'll go ahead and go to the tools menu 
and select audio mixer and here I will go ahead and adjust this volume so I will move this down to about minus 12 and I'll select here and select it also and just about minus 12 so it's exactly 11.8 it's close enough if I were to play this now you will notice that it no longer peaks. Once I have that settled, I have my endpoint done, I have my audio adjustment done, I can go ahead and close the audio mixer and I can go ahead and turn off my toggle source record and timeline button. So I can go ahead and see my timeline once again. I will move my playhead to the very beginning of my sequence and I'll go ahead and go ahead and edit this audio file into my timeline. I'm going to turn off the track selector for V1 so my video tracks are not interrupted. And I'm going to go ahead and press the letter B for an overwrite. And now the entire song has come in to the timeline. Now let's say I did not want this to happen. I wanted just a portion of the audio to come in to cover the videos I have in my timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this by pressing Command Z. If you're on a PC, it's Control Z as in Zebra. And the timeline, I will go ahead and put an in point at the very beginning. And I'll go to the very end and select an out point. The entire audio tracks have been selected and now I'm going to go ahead and once again from the very beginning here I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that into my timeline. Again the track selectors that are selected only for audio. Move my playhead here and I'll press the letter B as in boy for an overwrite edit. And now you will notice that only the section that was selected has been brought in and the audio only covers that section that I had selected, which was the in point to out point. I'll turn my video track selector back on and I'll go ahead and play what I have so far. Okay, so our rough cut is getting a little life to it by adding some music. Now you may notice that you have some interruption here from the music because here it transitions, but the cut comes afterwards. We will take care of that on a trimming mode. But for now, we're going to stick with our audio and our video. So perhaps I'd like to enhance my video by selecting to create a transition. So I'm going to leave my playhead at the very beginning and I'm going to apply a transition here. Now to do that, I will select my quick transition button, which is located to the left bottom side of the source monitor. I'll select on there. A window pops up and you will see it asks you what kind of dissolve you're selecting. I'm putting a dissolve and the precision center cut. And if you select on there it says starting a cut custom. So I'll put starting a cut because after all it's the very beginning of my clip. Now please keep in mind that in order to you for you to have a transition you must have what we call handles. Handles are frames that you have available from the very beginning of a source to the point where you put an endpoint. So in other words if you bring something in at the very beginning and then you were to put an endpoint a second later meaning 30 frames or 60 frames depending on what a second is for your footage that 
is your handle. Now by default you should have at least 15 frames or half a second available on each side of the clip. So I'll go ahead and select on add and a transition has been created. Now you'll see that my video on my record monitor has gone black and that's because it's starting from black and it's going to fade up to the video. So if I were to play this now Okay, so you see it fades up from black. Now if I wish to put a transition here and a transition here, I can also do the same thing. As long as my playhead is somewhere near that edit point, I can select my quick transition button and do the same here. Now remember, if this is not on starting a cut, it will, or I should say center on cut, it will remain to what it was last time. Now here, I did not do that. It went ahead and put it at the beginning of the next cut. If I wish to remove this transition here, I will select on this button, which is called Remove Effect. And once I do that, it does in fact remove the effect. I go to reapply the transition, make sure it's at the center on cut, and I'll click on add. For argument's sake, I'm going to save, which is command S or control S on a PC. And I'm going to press my spacebar or the L key to go ahead and play my rough cut. And that's how you start creating transitions and fade ups as you notice here. It also applied a transition to my audio file. And that's how you start adding also elements such as audio to your rough cut. Thanks for watching. This is Louis Sierra for Chesapeake Systems.